Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so another week of self-isolating over. Um, obviously, country is still in lockdown, even though some of the restrictions are now being eased off. Um, I still don't have a firm date for when I'm going back to work yet. Um, likelihood is it's going to be next month at this point, um, just by the information that we do have fed to us. Whether that's early next month or late le next month, I, at this point in time, don't really know. And, um, and even if I did know, I wouldn't be in a position at this point to really say anything, um, just because of you know the way the information is being fed out to us. Um, so yeah, it's that that kind of limbo still, um, and I'm still sort of occupying most of my time writing. <laughs> lots and lots and lots and lots of writing. Um, so much writing, in fact, and I, I don't know. Um, no, I, I do know because I would only have started it four days ago. <laughs> Since I'm on chapter four now. Um, I might have finished writing that project, the spin off, um, the spin off of the, the narration collection project. Might have finished writing that and then decided to write a sequel. Um, using one of the other characters as the as the main character and it is a sequel rather than a companion because it's not happening at the same time as the other story and that's you know that's that's the thing with the the never rating collection you do get the sort of the sequels but you also get the companions and although the sequels can be read before the earlier part of the storyline um because the way it's sort of been designed, and, and to be fair, the way the sequel has been designed is that you could use that as your first book, and it would be absolutely fine. Um, you just, you know, you can go back and read the other book in order to get all these other details that you that you've missed, um, or you know, expansion on a lot of details that you, that you've missed because uh, because you've read the other one first, but it is set after. The other one, so uh, a lot of the information that's being fed to you is stuff that would already be known, um, or a lot of stuff that you would have already known from reading the, the first one that I wrote. Um, yeah, I did not expect. Um, I did not expect to finish writing a book in nineteen days. Now, bear in mind, I wrote a nine to eleven page chapter every single day for 19 days <laughs> um that's actually like really really fast writing for me um even when i used to do a chapter a day every day um for every project that i was writing and that was up to about i think three projects at the most um one at the uh, that's sort of like most productive i was you're still talking like two to three pages um, per uh, per project at that point in time because my chapters were shorter. And I, I averaged two to three pages. Um, yeah, so this is this is a lot of writing for me. <laughs> um, but it's it's been good. It's been it's been um, it's been a very interesting process. And actually sort of it's allowed me to kind of focus a lot more. So when, because obviously, um, as I'm not planning to write another, at this point in time at least, I'm not planning to write another one in this sort of little spin-off collection. I've, I've decided it's going to have its own like series name, um, even in the end, just sort of like the, this is a spin-off of the Never Rating Collection, but not actually take the, the Never Rating Collection name because the Never Rating Collection itself is the four boys. That's, that's what the collection is. It's about those four boys. So um, I don't want to sort of muddle things by also saying this is part of the narrating collection because it is its own separate thing, even though it is connected to the narrating collection. So um, 
the way I'm going to tackle it is I'm going to, you know, obviously each book is going to have its own name and its naming convention is also different from um, from the rest of the narrating collection where you had sort of proper titles, whereas this one, it's going to be named after each of the, the main characters. Um, and then it's going to have a its own series title, um, but obviously also mention that there's a spin-off of the uh, of the narrating collection in its uh, description, probably at like the bottom of the description, <laughs> so that it's not the first people think uh, not the first thing that people see, so that people can sort of take these books as its own separate thing if that's what they want to do. Um, not having to have read the narrating collection, but the narrating collection is still there. If they want to, you know, go back and, and understand uh, how all of these characters reach the point they reach um, in the early 2000s. <laughs> or at least all the characters you kind of meet um, in, the, in the early 2000s. Uh, uh, anyway, um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting process um, at this point. Uh, and then, um, but it's it sort of, it's given me the the structure and the framework of how to make sure that I'm planning out something that is more of a good length for um, for a YA book, for a for a young adult or a new adult book, um, opposed to the narrating collection, which is just big, expansive doorstops. <laughs> so, um, and it, it's kind of weird because in some ways, you know, uh, I did have, I did used to have a, a sort of shorter story length writing style and somewhere along the way, I think because I'm, I'm such a sequential kind of writer or an, I'm naturally inclined to telling big, large stories, grand, uh, grand narratives and, and things that have sequels and stuff like that. But at some point I started just writing a lot longer of, of a story and not really knowing how to sort of how to sort of break things up and that's very much kind of what happened with you know but to be fair um because i have considered breaking the breaking the colors i see up into four shorter books um and i know roughly where the cuts for each of the books would be um the reason i'm not doing the work to sort of tidy that up at this point in time is because never uh, because because the colors i see does work so well as a doorstop. It, it, you know, it has been designed as a doorstop. It has been designed with this one long continuous story. It works as a long continuous story. Um, so at this point in time, it's kind of like, well, you know what? It still gets a lot more sales than the other two books. <laughs> more often than not, it still gets more sales than the other two books. So, okay, yes, um, it's not necessarily as marketable because of its length but it's still getting enough attention for me to kind of go you know at this point in time I know how I can break it up but I'm going to keep it as is and likewise with No Doors Allowed and We Giants I'm just going to go you know what this is my this is my pet project these books I know they're door stops I know they're less marketable um but they work the way that they they are they've been designed to be door stops um and I know a lot of people don't tend to do, you know, doorstop reading these days, but, you know, it, it's people still can make it through that kind of length of a book. So they're not, not, you know, the worst thing in the world to, to be out there as these big, long, massive doorstops. <laughs> they, they are such doorstops. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of a case of I've kind of gone, you know, never writing collection is made up of one shorter book, which is short for its for its own reasons, um, and then three longer books, and that's what the collection is going to be. That's how it how it is. And yes, I know uh, the longer books aren't as marketable, but the collection as a whole may pull itself through. And I'm going to be using obviously Hyena Boy, which is a shorter book, and yet uh, the natural kind of way into the never writing collection. Um, say the natural way in because it's a shorter book and less intimidating people are probably going to be more inclined to take more notice of that one first um because it's going to look like an easier read <laughs> it's going to look like an easier read and then they're going to start reading it <laughs> and, and then they're going to be like oh, oh this this is a really this is a really hard-hitting story but this 
this is not an easy read. Um, a good read, just not necessarily an easy read. Um, just for some of the some of the things that you know, obviously the main character goes through. <laughs> Although, if you're not prepared for it to not be an easy read, then you've not read the description. Um, to be perfectly honest, it, it you know you know I, it does mention the fact that it is a story about child abuse. Really, the description and like the, the opening scene. The opening scene makes it absolutely clear what kind of story it is going to read. <laughs> and I would argue that although you've got a lot of heavy themes in all, all the other three books, um, they're probably they're longer reads, so they're more daunting reads. But I would argue they were easier reads because you have so much else to kind of. I don't want to say cushion, um, but yeah, that that's kind of it's kind of a good way of putting. It. You've got a lot more um, moments that kind of balance out um, all of the more difficult stuff, all of the sort of harder hitting stuff, all of the you know the the less nice stuff that goes on. You've got a lot more stuff that kind of counterbalances it. You've got a lot more time to kind of get to know the characters and get to really care about the characters, and you, you feel like you've gone on more of a journey with them. And yes, there it's a bit more of a, a roller coaster because you know there's time for it to be a bit more of a roller coaster, but it's not as they're not as difficult to read um, because you've you've got that ability to kind of take the good bits and, and sort of roll with the good bits for a bit and then and then roll with the good bits for a bit and then it was because Hein Boy is, is much shorter length, those hard hitting bits do kind of pile up on each other um, pretty quickly. Um, so yeah I would say that Hein Boy is a less daunting read in terms of length but it's a harder read um, in, in terms of just what you have to deal with in that amount of time, whereas the other three books are going to be more daunting looking reads, but actually they're probably going to be easier reads once you sort of like start reading it, start sort of getting into it. Um, so then you've got the two spin-offs, um, which will have their own uh, series title. Um, I, mean, I kind of know what that's going to be, but I don't want to sort of name drop anything for it yet. Um, so I have no idea. I definitely need to release No Doors Allowed before I release these two, um, I think. <laughs> <clears throat> Just because I feel like you need some of the information that you get in No Doors Allowed, or No Doors Allowed needs to be a definite thing because it's set later in the timeline and a lot of the stuff that you learn in, uh, in the, these two books refer to things that happen later in the timeline. So. Definitely feel like No Doors Allowed needs to be released first, although I am working on sort of polishing up the, the first of the two books as I'm writing the second of the two books, um, alongside obviously doing the editing for No Doors Allowed as well. So I'm basically trying to fill my time as much as possible. Can you tell? Can you tell? Um, but yeah, the, these two books are going to be sort of like their own their own little unique thing they're going to be tied to the main series but they are their own thing um just because you know it it's um just because in terms of style in terms of obviously it's set uh, a lot later in time as well um you're focusing on different characters it's not set in never aten never aten is referenced definitely in the first book it's not yet been referenced in the second book um are you are talking about something that is existing in its own kind of bubble, separate from the Neverating bubble, though it is connected to the Neverating bubble. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna let it stand alone as its own sort of as, a, as its own sort of thing, whilst it being affiliated with the, the Neverating collection. Um, and it's it's gonna be one of those things where people may sort of read those two books and may only read those two books or they may read, read those two books and go, hmm, I'm, I'm kind of curious about this, this narrating collection that, you know, that I know these things are connected to and then, and then go back to read it. But that's why I would, in the, the sort of product description thing, put the connection to Neverating uh, collection sort of at the bottom. So it's not the first thing that people see, so that when people sort of, you know, just perusing the initial kind of blurb to it um yeah then 
you know, free to sort of like go, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give this a go. It sounds interesting. And then hopefully their interest will be piqued and they'll go with me again. Raise my stuff. And then Rachel's stuff. That's my, that's my guy. <laughs> <clears throat> In the meantime, I'm getting lots and lots of lovely practice for how to put out shorter narratives again um which will help me when i eventually come to start writing the third and fourth book in the shadow beneath the light series shadows beneath Shad i think shadows beneath the light that's not what it's called um no it is shadows beneath the light yeah that is right <laughs> um yeah when i sort of coming to, when i'm sort of coming to um write the third and fourth book for, for that because that's going to be sort of big major rewrite stuff. Um, as I've mentioned before, I'm, I'm basically overhauling both of what I originally had as, as the rest of that series. Um, when I sort of come to do them, this is going to be sort of good practice um, for how I'm going to you know, basically plot out chapters and uh, make sure that I stick within a decent length. Um, so that I don't end up with big massive door stops for the other two books in that series. So yeah, all in all, it's kind of like really good practice um, at this moment in time and giving me lots of things to sort of focus on. It's also really helping with the, as, as I said before, it's really helping with kind of the editing process for No Doors Allowed. Um, because it's, it's, it's allowing me to sort of like go, okay, so all of these things that I've done back then, um, do we have explanations for them by the time they've reached 2004? Oh, we do. How have they gotten those explanations? Oh, that's how they've gotten them. Okay, I can feed some of that information into um, into the earlier two books. It's allowing me to sort of explore the concepts that I've sort of come up with a little bit more, and it's it's helping me edit the earlier editing process because it's it's sort of defining things a lot better than they than they have been defined. So, yeah, all in all. I know this is kind of like the third or fourth week that I've just been like writing, 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 but you know, I'm not, there's not much else for me to talk about, guys. I'm in a lockdown. <laughs> what, do, what else do you want me to talk about? The exercise that I've been doing, the fact that I'm putting on weight. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be right to brain for probably a little while, and uh, yeah, sorry about that. Right, okay, I will wrap this one up now before I get babbly babbly babbly. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you are looking forward to the next one and I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.